What do we have at the foundation? High Priestess, Pisces energy at the foundation of the reading. At the moment, I feel that a lot of us are in between worlds. There's everything that we've always known, and then there's a gateway that stands before us, which is leading us into the new world. But the admission fee all has to do with sacrifice, sacrificing everything once and for all that no longer serves your highest good to be able to step into this new timeline. I've been receiving a lot of messages the past couple of days about there being no more time. And I feel that as we come out of this Mercury retrograde, which started a couple of days ago, we're going to really see this showing up in our everyday waking lives. It's like this Mercury retrograde is a last call. All the things that you've been putting off, the things that you have placed on the back burner, or the things that you don't think will make a difference in helping you move forward, are all the things that you now need to put all your energy into finally accomplishing and eradicating from your life, depending on how that may be showing up. There has been this kind of, well, it's been kind of serious, I gotta say, but the potency of the divine working in all of our lives right now is like nothing I've ever felt. There's this sort of scrambling taking place. I'm seeing a huge collective of people standing at a dock, and there's a massive ship there, kind of like a Noah's Ark. I didn't even think about that as I was saying it. It just occurred to me. And I'm also hearing these horns, right? The horns that you hear on ships. The drawbridge is still down, but there's still a lot of people standing at that dock. And the reason why these people aren't crossing the bridge and getting onto the ship is because there's a weight maximum, right? Just like when you go on a plane, right? You have to make sure that your bags are able to fit in the overhead compartments. You can't have excessively heavy baggage. And this is exactly what I'm getting here. And all these people that are standing on the dock are not willing to give up their possessions, so to speak. Although this isn't literal, this is more spiritual in nature. So I'm picking up on more behavioral patterns, uh, addictions for some people, uh, relationships, uh, connections with toxic people that are dragging you down, all of these sort of things that we always hear about, right? But and now it's really gotten to the point where you are going to solidify yourself inside of that space and your reality will now reflect all of which you are not willing to eradicate from your life. There's a vibrational war taking place right now. All of these things that we hold on to keep us in a lower vibration. And the planet, the collective, is trying to shift into a higher dimensional timeline. And it's just not possible for you to shift along into that timeline when you are holding on to things that are in resonance with the lower timeline. Now, a lot of you will understand exactly what I'm saying and others of you won't understand that, but it's really the simplest way I can put this. And I would go as far as saying that if you don't understand what I'm saying, it's because you're making up excuses for something you're holding on to. You refuse to understand, right? It's very interesting. I just said that message. I didn't even have time to think about that. It just came out of my mouth. I just heard very clearly, it's time to pick a side. And it's also an energy that is suggesting that there's no sitting this one out, right? Because sitting this one out is actually you picking a side. It's an energy of non-action, which automatically defaults you to the lower timeline. See, everything we're getting here requires action right? I've been picking up this overwhelming sense of self-doubt inside the collective as well. It's like the spirit of gluttony, addiction, and laziness is all around. This is why you're being called on to get very disciplined right now. What do we have the sacred, please? King of Pentacles. Wow. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, energy, and the sacral. So the King of Pentacles is one of the main cards of discipline. It's somebody that is assuming responsibility for themselves and their actions. And it's also somebody that is taking complete control and leadership over their life because they know what's at stake here. I've noticed a rise in people that have just kind of given up. And you have to understand that that is exactly where this opposing force that all of us are feeling in our lives wants you, 
right? Because when you give up, this means that you're giving up control to an external force, somebody who presides over your life and tells you what you are and what you aren't. In other words, it's an energy of complete and utter indoctrination. This is like people relinquishing their freedom willingly because they think it's easier to do that than it is to push forward in power. You know, these readings attract a lot of people that just want to have their bad behaviors validated to them, right? People don't want to hear, okay, if you do this, that, and the other, then this will unfold in your life. They want to be told, no, just keep doing exactly what you're doing and abundance will be yours. You will become the chosen one, right? But this is not the way I read. I read you an energy that supplies you with effective ways to self-empower and to bring forward whatever it is you're looking for yourself. I read from the perspective of you being your own superhero. I don't read in a way that validates individuals waiting for an external force to fix all their problems. And this has been coming up in all the readings lately. Uh, this is so important right now. The energy that I've been feeling as well is like a crying out from the divine to really start getting yourselves together, getting yourselves organized, pulling yourselves together, depending on what that may look like in your own individual life. If you're doing the work and you know you're doing the work, you're good. But there's a lot of people that aren't. Sadly, there's more people that aren't than people that are. I'm seeing this massive tree being shaken right now in my mind's eye, and there's the people that have nestled themselves onto the tree, and they're holding on. They're not going to be shaken off the tree, but then there's a whole lot of people that I see raining down from this giant tree. Oh, okay. It's the, it's the Kabbalistic tree of life, which is interesting because... The two pillars on the high priestess here represent the Kabbalistic tree of life. What do we have at the solar plexus, please? Three of Pentacles, Capricorn energy at the solar plexus. This is reminding you all that your bodies are temples. And you are spiritual beings in physical form. The three pentacles are representing mind, body, and spirit in this reading. And the collaboration that you are in with the divine. This is very much speaking about how each one of you play an incremental role in this shift. And the importance of implementing this discipline in your life right now. The divine is asking you to invest in your future. Invest in yourself. Invest in the evolution of the collective. You see, we've all been indoctrinated inside this density into a space that doesn't require action to be taken, right? By that external force, by that opposing force. It promises comfort. It promises to supply you with all you will need if you just sit down and be quiet. This opposing force does not want people to stand up and step into their power. Three of Pentacles at the solar plexus, which is all about your personal power, which is a byproduct of you having the confidence to take the reins in your life. We are preparing to rebuild a new timeline on the ashes of the old, but it requires all hands to be on deck. There's a very supportive energy around all of you right now that is telling me that there's an overwhelming sense of support once you make the decision to grab onto the reins. It says that areas of your life where you once found restrictions are areas where your path is now cleared. It's time to start working on your gifts, on your talents, because it's these things that lead you to your purpose, to your mission. They all work in tandem. Your talents, your gifts, your purpose, your calling, all of these things come together to make you who you are. What do we have at the heart, please? Knight of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, energy at the heart. It's time to take action. Knight of Swords is all about lifestyle changes. It's a very incisive, certain energy, confirming that what I'm saying about this supportive force around all of you right now, it's like you start feeling like there's less pushback when you try to move in one direction or the other. You feel the support come through. You know, I notice quite a lot that people love to talk about who they are or what they would do, but never act upon any of it. You know, I see this a lot in 
the comment sections of my videos, other people's videos. People are just all talk and no action. I mentioned in the previous reading, less talk, more action. And this is what this Knight of Swords is speaking about here. I just heard, I don't know what you're waiting for. You know, we live in a time where from one day to the next, it can change in an absolute instance. We know this based on what happened in 2020, but there's still a lot of people that it didn't use that as a lesson, right? You know, there's an overwhelming amount of people that I know, I experienced this myself, that went through the biggest awakenings of their life during that period of time, and obviously it makes perfect sense. Those major timelines being adjusted around that time, a lot of people came out of that with a lot of success after years of pushback. And I think this all has to do with the way you all handled yourselves during that time, right? A lot of the people that were up prior to 2020 are now down. A lot of the people that were down prior to 2020 are now up. It's these sort of global events that take place that have a way of shifting our timelines. They're kind of towers that happen, right? I mean, you can take this back to the beginning of time and see how there's a pattern there. Every sort of massive event like this changes the world on the other side of it, right? It takes time for things to reorganize themselves and settle back down. And there's this sort of ramping up taking place inside the collective right now. It's like we're barreling towards some sort of explosive change. And it's during this period of time that we are able to manifest ourselves onto one timeline or the other on the other side of this, but it all has to do with the way we're moving in the here and now. I've mentioned this in some previous readings. It's an energy of remote viewing, right? Visualizing a destination and building your life in the here and now accordingly so you can shift onto that timeline. But this is something that we're all being called to do as a collective right now. It requires all of us to work in a kind of unison to bring forward the change that we want to see. What do we have at the throat, please? Five of swords, Aquarius energy at the throat. There's this great divide happening, and I can see it on the table here. Right, these first three cards, the High Priestess, the King of Pentacles, and the Three of Pentacles, speaks about the actions that the Divine is asking you to take right now in order to step through the portal onto the new timeline. But then we have this resistance. Knight of Swords, Five of Swords. I just, okay. Yeah, there's, this is like a crabs in the barrel kind of mentality, right? It's like you're trying to break free, but then these other individuals that refuse to do the work are trying to get in your way. It's like you're at the dock getting ready to cross the bridge into the ship, right? To the ark, so to speak. But then they're trying to stop you. It almost gives me the energy that they're not allowed because they didn't sacrifice what they were told to sacrifice from their lives, right? These are people that have been told time and time again what they needed to do to be able to be elevated onto the new timeline. But now here we are in the 11th hour, and they're starting to realize the reality of their situations. A lot of people are about to drop off. You're going to see this all around you. You're going to hear about people losing everything. I was also getting messages about a lot of you having dreams about people you knew in the early 2000s, 20-something years ago. It's like all of a sudden you start having dreams about these people. Now, these dreams are interesting because I feel for a lot of you, you're dreaming about people that you might have been enemies with or had falling outs with. But in your dreams, it's as if you're meeting in current day and breaking bread. Now, I feel that this is speaking about the show coming to a close, right? It's like you're all playing your parts, but in the dreams, you're seeing yourself breaking bread with these people, like your actors that have just stepped off a stage. Now, I say all this because this is very representative of what's taking place inside the collective right now. It's like these major cycles are closing but they can be compared to kinds of scenes in a play or a movie. And right now I can hear the owl that's on my property. You all may not be able to hear him. But he usually comes out when I pull the high priestess, right? See, there's the owl 
High Priestess also speaks about divine guidance, and I feel that the owl is telling us that you need to pay attention to your intuition. The High Priestess is also the card of the subconscious mind, which can speak about our dreams as well. Now, I feel that the reason why those particular messages are coming through in regards to the dreams and these kinds of scenes coming to an end, so to speak, is to provide us with a understanding of what's taking place inside the collective so it makes it easier for us to compartmentalize what may be going on and how we can navigate with all of this in mind. What do we have at the third eye? Two of Cups. Fell right on that Five of Swords. In reverse at the third eye. Yeah, there's something going on in regards to events that took place in a lot of your lives during the early 2000s. I guess it really depends on how old you are, but there's something there. And I feel that this has to do with this Mercury retrograde as well. It's interesting because the two of cups in reverse is an energy of miscommunication, right? So this is really highlighting this Mercury retrograde, but I feel like it's deeper than that. I feel like you're being asked to address any sort of imbalances in relationships at this current time. It goes back to what I said in regards to the divine asking you to make necessary sacrifices as a means to calibrate with this new timeline. What do we have in the crown, please? Wow. The fool at the crown. And everything I've been channeling through is leading us to this new beginning, this fool. But it's almost as if there's an energy here that suggests that people think they're going to be able to get on the ship to the new timeline without making the sacrifice. It's like an energy of somebody expecting to reap the benefits without putting any work in. It's like somebody who's living a lie, living inside an illusion. But then what they find is when it comes time to cross over the bridge, it turns out to be just a mirage and they fall over the edge, right? See how he's just smelling the flower? Almost as if he's not even all there. It's like he's away with the fairies, right? It's like somebody who's not seeing the reality of their situation. And even when they slip off the edge, they still refuse to accept the truth. What do we have at the foundation, please? Nine of Pentacles, Virgo energy at the foundation of the reading underneath the High Priestess. This is an energy of setbacks. It can be financial as well. I feel that I'm picking up on some external force. These could be people that you know, people that haven't been putting the work in. It's like they're about to have the rug pulled out from underneath them. These are the people that have been given the same opportunity as everybody else. They've been getting all the signs and synchronicities, but they've just been mainlining the lie, right? Mainlining the simulation. These are the people that refused to wake up and made everybody else's life more difficult because of it. These are the people that would have created a lot of resistance on your path. What do we have at the sacral, please? Three of Wands, Vool, at the sacral. Uh, exactly what I'm picking up here. This is the energy of a dreamer, right? But not the good kind. It's the kind of dreamer that doesn't put any action behind making those dreams a reality. I'm seeing the scales, right? The scales of justice in my mind's eye tipping. These are the kinds of people that have spent most of their lives on top and didn't realize that the divine was watching them the entire time. These are the kinds of people that look down and other people that are less fortunate than them. These are the same people that are now going to experience what it's like to be on the bottom. It's divine law. This is how justice unfolds in the spiritual realm, is people completely unprepared for what's coming their way. It's very much a, a laugh now, cry later kind of energy. Absolutely no foresight. Just taking what they can in the here and now. 
and giving nothing in return. It's interesting because the more focused and disciplined you become on your path, the more it brings these energies out, right? It's like all of those that have been putting the work in, struggling day after day, however that may show up for you, and have been holding on to your hope and faith are now finally shifting to this new timeline. And all of those that made other people's lives more difficult are being left behind. I'm also hearing something about these dreams, about these um, possible enemies that you had early 2000s, somewhere around this time. I, I just really feel that there's some sort of major cycle closing out right now. 21, 22, 23 year cycle, something like this. And I feel that these dreams that you're having about these people, right, where you're breaking bread with them, it's almost as if I feel that is a sign to you that those individuals are now having to pay back what they took from you and others during that period of time. And this is, this is how karma works. It comes in these massive cycles. It's very hard for us to understand this because it's all taking place on the macro kind of perspective. Karma is typically delivered out astrologically speaking. You know, we know this to be true when it comes to things like our Saturn returns. It's like the universe saying to us, look, you've been living your life this particular way for this amount of years. Now, this isn't going to work moving forward. It's unsustainable. So we need you to repent for this. We need you to take whatever necessary actions you need to in order to release whatever it is that may be causing you to live your life this particular way so you can become a better version of yourself and step into the new timeline. You know, some people get it and some people don't, you know? And then, you know, we have another Saturn return. You know, usually you get it, I think it's about 27 to 30, and then it will happen again in your late 50s, and then you have another one in your 80s if you make it, right? It's like debt, karmic debt. If you don't clear this up during your second Saturn return, I mean, there's no telling what can happen. What do we have the solar plexus, please? The fool, again, we have it twice. Oh, wow. Came out right after I gave that message as well. This is just representing individuals that are this very careless, foolish kind of energy, right? It's like there he is, or she, whatever, tiptoeing around. I've gotten away with quite a lot, and I still haven't had to pay back this karmic debt. Mm. Very narcissistic energy. These are the kinds of individuals that like to test the existence of God. This never ends well, because usually this will hit them definitely when they least expect it, but also when they're too old to do anything about it, right? They just don't have any energy. I've seen this happen. You know, sometimes these individuals just solidify themselves and the kind of nightmare that they've been bringing into other people's lives. It's like that nightmare becomes their reality. I feel that these messages are starting to come through now to show you all, right? An example of what happens when this lack of growth is left unaddressed. What do we have at the heart, please? Lovers, Zepar, treason and revolt, right? These are people that are playing God. They think they're God. Or they challenge the existence of God, just confirming everything I've just said. But the karma for these kinds of actions are interesting because it typically hits these kinds of individuals psychologically speaking. They don't even realize that they're living on a timeline where their karma has become their reality, but they're still doubting the presence of God in their life when God is literally putting them through karma. So in other words, they're now living a complete lie. Boy, have I seen this one happen before. People that are propped up, given opportunities, and then squander those opportunities based on their treatment towards others. They gradually just start losing it all, little by little, just starts to dwindle away. And though, from my vantage point, I can see it unfolding, I can see it taking place, they still don't wake up to it. They just still try to perpetuate the lie. 
You know, I saw this happen to an individual who was given a great opportunity, a lot of success, but this person was an absolutely horrible human being. Their treatment towards other people was absolutely deplorable. Squandered opportunities, spit in the face of anybody who tried to love them or anybody who tried to help them advance even further. And this person has gradually had a fall from grace over the past four years. Slowly but surely, now this person is a junkie and completely irrelevant in their field. Nobody respects this person, but still they continue to perpetuate this illusion, this lie around who they are. And everybody can see it but them. This person used to make fun of people's appearance, this kind of individual, right? Would flat out tell people that they're ugly and start picking out every insecurity that they knew other individuals to have. This individual, not only have they become a junkie, but they have injected so much plastic into their face that they look like a circus clown, right? So you see how karma works, right? This person hurts people, and now they become the pain that they deliver to others, and they don't even realize it. And then we have Hakamiya, strength, loyalty, Leo energy. And I just felt a huge weight lift as well. And I'm starting to receive messages surrounding your path. A lot of you have been very dedicated, loyal, right? It says right there. And this is why you are going to be lifted up onto this new timeline, right? But all of this here, though that was quite dark, it's necessary for you to get used to seeing this, okay? Because I feel that this could really speak about what you are going to start witnessing around you. So it's like the divine is priming you, preparing you for not only what you're going to witness, but what might come your way, right? Resistance from these people who refuse to Wake up and take the call. It's also very important that you don't step off your path for any of these individuals. Sure, it's always a good idea to pray for people. Pray that they wake up, they repent, but you are not to step out of alignment and take a detour on your path for any of them. Because as soon as you start reintroducing these energies into your life, you will relinquish your mission. So by order of the divine, you are to stay on your path, stay very focused, and just prepare yourself for what you may hear or see. Okay? This is the time we're entering into now. What do we have in the throat, please? The Magician, Gemini Virgo Energy, the Generous God, Spiritual Wisdom and Magic, Helps one gain wisdom and discover hidden secrets. Wow, what a lift in energy I am now beginning to feel. This confirms everything I just said, okay? Because this is you really starting to understand your potential, your power, your purpose, and the fact that there's principalities at play here. You need to stay very focused on your vision moving forward. You're manifesting at a very high rate, and you need to concentrate. You can't entertain any of these energies that have been gallivanting around, treating life like their own personal amusement park while everybody else was being called to do their part and step in line in accordance with their mission. And to entertain these individuals in the capacity that we're channeling through here is you getting in the way of the divine's will. So don't do that. You need to stay very focused right now. This whole reading is about focus, concentration, and determination on your path. Some of these people may have been your best friends. Some of these people may be toxic family members, but they have given themselves over to an opposing force that will use these individuals to get you to step out of line. So don't do that to yourself. And this Five of Swords stacked with this magician says it all, right? Here you are manifesting at a very high rate. And then here they are trying to get in your way. What do we have at the third eye, please? Three of Wands. Aries energy at the third eye. So we have three of Wands twice, but this is very interesting because they're read in different polarities. Here they are, right? Dreamer. Without taking any action towards those dreams. And then here you are. 
the visionary, taking leadership over your life, an energy of foresight, and you're also being divinely guided. The visionary who doesn't even need sight to see because it's your spirit that guides you. It's your intuition that guides you. It's your knowing that guides you. It's the feeling that guides you. Construction of the universe. Help with great works. Protection from adversaries, right? You're constructing this new reality. I'm getting a lot of ringing in my ears right now. This is what this is all about. You're co-creating with the divine right now, helping to construct this new timeline. And these principalities, these individuals that are being used as vessels for these principalities are going to do whatever they can to stop you. What do we have with the crown to close out the reading? Three of Pentacles. Capricorn energy again. We have it twice. Perfect. God hearing laminations. Mental force protects against sorrow and illness. So we're reiterating the message that we got with this Three of Pentacles at the solar plexus. You're co-creating with the divine. The union of mind, body, and spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So however this resonates for you, now is the time to focus on your gifts. Nurture what the divine has given you. Remove everything off of the back burner. Address any details in your life that you may have been putting off. Now is a time when you will begin to seek great rewards for doing just that. Don't hesitate. Instead, embrace the energy that is supporting you doing this. And pay attention to your dreams. Because again, you're going to start to get a greater understanding of what might be unfolding in your own individual life at present. This is the message I have available to all of you, depending on where you are on this timeline, should you choose to accept. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like a personal reading, you can find all of my contact details in the description below this video. And thank you for your donations. Take care.